Did you get much in the way of news about the results of the missions that you undertook? Yes, we used to uh, hear via London and headquarters Cairo from the, some of the individuals that we dropped saying that the drop was successful and to even say thank you very much for looking after us so well. Um, the strange occasion did happen once when I was uh, happened to be uh, in a, a pub in London called the Roundhouse in Common Gardens. This was getting towards the end of the war when an individual in army uniform walked into this pub, uh, he was a New Zealander, and, uh, and said, ah, oh, I, I recognize you, and it transpired in actual fact that we had dropped him on uh, an operation in Greece to blow up a viaduct, and that he had since come out of, uh, of uh, Greece and had dropped again in the south of France uh, to help the Mackie. Those were certainly the two means whereby, well, the last one, of course, was very unusual, I think. It was an amazing coincidence, I think. The, the viaduct was the Gogopotamus? That's viaduct. the one, yes, yes. Now, you said that the people whom you dropped were known only by pseudonyms to you. Yes. But did you ever discover the names of any important people their actual names afterwards? Not, uh, not as far as the Yugoslavs were concerned. On this uh, drop in Greece, we did in actual fact find out that uh, certainly two of the names were the, the leader of the expedition, of Brigadier Myers, and the number two, which was kept uh, Major Woodhouse. How long would it take you to reach Greece or Yugoslavia? The, um, the journeys there and back were roughly in the 9, 10 or 11 hour uh, endurance. So to get there would be roughly, what, a four, four and a half, five hour journey. Travelling at what kind of speed? Uh, I suppose about 200 knots. And the heights? Height about between fifteen and seventeen thousand. And when you got there, can you describe again what you were looking for? Yes, we we always dropped both agents and supplies on a pattern of light, a, a pattern which was known to us and given to us uh, from uh, the partisans through London the, to the Hi Cairo headquarters. What did the pattern of lights look like? From it the could earth? be a, a cross, a, a large cross, it could be a square, it could be a diamond, it could be any of those shapes, really. It was necessary to have these shapes because um, one did come across small villages that would probably, the lights there would give an indication of probably a dropping zone. So it was necessary to have a, a, a certainly a pattern of lights on which we should drop them. How difficult was it to find the pattern of lights? Um, well, it, it, it was really a, a, a very highly skilled operation in many ways, and I, I really admired the navigators on these trips. They were extremely well qualified navigators. They uh, would operate on probably three or four different methods of navigation. They would, of course, do the normal dead reckoning, uh, but they would also home uh, by radio on probably a known radio station if they knew the, uh, that Belgrade was broadcasting, and it would be probably broadcasting up to roughly midnight every night. They would, we would home by radio onto those stations uh, they'd also use uh, astro navigation and of course using the navigation of known coded lights from say the Turkish coast. Did you ever get completely lost? No, never. Were there any cases that you heard of of planes having accidents in the land in the dropping zone? No, no, not up until the time I, uh, not for the whole time I was with the, the force. We never, we lost, um, 
we lost a, a Wellington on a, on a Cree trade. Uh, we were dropping um, uh, supplies to the some British Army people that had been left in uh, Crete and were operating uh, as saboteurs in uh, on the uh, Greek Crete island. Uh, we were scheduled to drop some supplies there, and for this raid we used uh, used a Wellington. And halfway there, its engines failed, and it had to ditch. The pilot and the navigator were picked up, um, and the wireless operator, but we lost the rear gunner. He, he unfortunately went down with the aircraft. They were subsequently sighted by a, a South African squadron, which was based at Marriott, and uh, were rescued by a, a, a Navy rescue launch. That was the only uh, fatality that we had during the time I was with the, uh, the flight. Do you remember when that was, approximately? On October the 6th, 1942. Now, I think that you took part in the famous raid against the Italian fleet at Taranto. Can you tell me in as much detail as you can recollect your memory of that raid? Yes. Um, when you mentioned the, the, the raid on Taranto, I think that the, uh, it could be separated probably into two parts because I think the fleet air arm carried out a, a daylight raid on the Italian fleet at Taranto. Uh, we did the, uh, a night operation on it. Um, it was uh, necessary uh, in the Battle of the Mediterranean to get the Italian fleet out of Taranto. It was causing a threat which the, the Royal Navy wanted to be able to deal with. And so it was decided that uh, in addition to the, what the fleet air arm doing the daylight raids, that the RAF would do a night raid. And the only aircraft that would uh, reach Taranto at that time, of course, was the Liberators in the Middle East. So it was decided that um, on the 9th of June that... Um, I think it was three liberators would carry out this night raid on, on Toronto. Which year was this? In uh, the 9th of June, 1942. Can you describe what you saw? It was a, a beautiful night and uh, a clear night and uh, the visibility for, uh, for that time of the year was, was very good. Um, the flak from the ships in the harbour was very heavy when we, uh, when we arrived there, uh, but not particularly accurate. It was um, a, lo a lot of uh, anti-aircraft was being pushed up into the air, but it wasn't, in our opinion, very accurate. So uh, it didn't really deter us from doing a, a good bombing run on the ships in the harbour. Did you have much of a sight of the ships? Not really. Um, it was sufficient to be able to see reasonably clearly the, the harbour and the, uh, not the ships themselves, but certainly the outline of the harbour and the, and the coastline. Could you see the result of your own bombing? Not really, no. No. We felt that, in actual fact, we had dropped our bombs in the harbour. But uh, whether we didn't see any results of any ships being hit or anything like that. 